All right, this is a helicopter flying handbook, chapter 11, page 17 and 24. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness, LTE. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness, LTE, or an unanticipated yaw is defined as an uncommanded rapid yaw towards the advancing blade which does not subside of its own accord. It can result in the loss of the aircraft if left unchecked. It is very important for pilots to understand that loss of tail rotor effectiveness is caused by an aerodynamic interaction between the main rotor and the tail rotor and not caused from a me mechanical failure. Some helicopter types are more likely to encounter LTE due to a normal certification thrust produced by having a tail rotor that, although meeting certi certification standards, is not always able to produce additional thrust demanded by the pilot. A helicopter is a collection of compromises. Compare the size of an airplane propeller to that of a tail rotor. Then, consider the horsepower required to run the propeller. For example, Cessna 172P is equipped with a 160 horsepower engine. A Robinson R44 with a comparably sized tail rotor is rated for a maximum of 245 horsepower. If you assume that the tail rotor consumes 50 horsepower, only 195 horsepower remains to drive the main rotor. If the pilot were to apply enough collective to acquire 215 horsepower from the engine and enough left pedal to acquire 15 horsepower from the tail rotor, the resulting engine overload would lead to one of the two outcomes, slow down reduction RPM of premature failure. In either outcome, anti-torque would be insufficient and total lift might be less than needed to remain airborne. Every helicopter design requires some type of anti-torque system to counteract main rotor torque and prevent spinning once the helicopter lifts off the ground. A, helicopter's, a helicopter is heavy and the power plant places a high demand on fuel. Weight penalizes performance, but all helicopters must have an anti-torque system which adds weight. Therefore, the tail rotor is certified for normal flight conditions. Environmental forces can overwhelm any aircraft, rendering the inherently unstable helicopter especially vulnerable. As with any aerodynamic condition, it is very important for pilots not only to understand the definition of terms, but more importantly, how and why they happen, how to avoid the situation, and lastly, how to correct the condition once it is encountered. We must first understand the capabilities of the aircraft and even better what it is not capable of doing. For example, if you were flying a helicopter with a maximum gross weight of 5,200 pounds, would a pilot normally try to take on fuel baggage and passengers causing the weight to exceed 5,500 pounds? A wise professional pilot should never exceed the certified maximum gross weight or performance flight weight for any aircraft. The manuals are written for safety and reliability. The limitations in emergency procedures are stressed because lapses in procedures or exceeding limitations can result in aircraft damage or human fatalities. At the very least, exceeding limitations will increase the cost of maintenance and ownership of any aircraft and especially helicopters. Overload parts will fail before their design lifetime. Overloaded parts will fail before the design lifetime. There is no extra parts in helicopter. Respect and discipline pilots. Exercise for following flight manners should also be applied to understanding aerodynamic conditions. If flight envelopes are exceeded, the end result can be catastrophic. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness is an aerodynamic condition that and, and is the result of a control margin deficiency in the tail rotor. It can affect all single rotor helicopters that utilize tail rotors of some design. The design of main and tail rotor blades and the tail boom assembly can can affect the characteristics and susceptibility of loss of tail rotor control or effectiveness but will not nullify the phenomenon entirely transitional lift is obtained by any amount of clean air through the main rotor system. Chapter 3 discusses transitional lift with respect to the main rotor blade, explaining that the more clean air there is going through the rotor system, the more efficient it becomes. The same holds true for the tail rotor. As the tail rotor works in less turbulent air, it reaches a point of transitional thrust. At this point, the tail rotor becomes aerodynamically efficient and the improved efficiently produces more antitorque thrust. The pilot can determine when the tail rotor has reached transitional thrust. As more anti-torque thrust is produced, the nose of the helicopter yaws to the left, 
opposite direction of the tail rotor thrust, forcing the pilot to correct with right pedal application, actually decreasing the left pedal. This in turn decreases the angle of attack of the tail rotor blades. Pilots should be aware of the characteristics of the helicopter they fly and particularly aware of the amount of tail rotor pedal typically required for different flight conditions. Low tail rotor effectiveness is a condition that occurs when the flow of air through a tail rotor is altered in some way either by altering the angle or speed at which the air passes through the rotating blades of the tail rotor system. An effective tail rotor relies on a stable and relatively undisturbed airflow in order to provide a steady and constant anti-torque reaction as discussed in the previous paragraph. The pitch and angle of attack of the individual plates will determine the thrust output the tail rotor. A change to any of these alters the amounts of thrust generated. A pilot's yaw pedal input affects the thrust reaction from the tail rotor, altering the amount of thrust delivered for the same yaw input creates an imbalance. Taking this imbalance to extreme will result in the loss of effective control in the yawing plane and LTE will occur. This uh, alteration of tail rotor thrust can be affected by numerous external factors. The main factors contributing to LTE are airflow and downdraft generated by the main rotor blades interfering with the airflow entering the tail rotor assembly. Main blade vortices developed at the main blade tips entering the tail rotor. Turbulence and other natural phenomenon affecting the airflow surrounding the tail rotor. A high power setting, hence large main rotor pitch angles, inducing considerable main rotor blade downwash, and hence more turbulence than when the helicopter is in a low power condition. A slow forward airspeed, typically at speeds where transitional lift and traditional thrust or in the process of change and airflow around the tail rotor will vary in directional speed. The airflow relative to the helicopter, worst case relative wind within plus or minus 15 degree of the 10 o'clock position, generating vortices that can blow directly into the tail rotor. This is dictated by the characteristics of the helicopter aerodynamics of tail boom position, tail rotor size, and position relative to the main rotor and vertical stabilizer size and shape. Weather cock stability, tail winds from 120 degrees to 240 degrees, such as left cross winds causing high pilot workload. And C, tail rotor vortices, ring state, 210 degrees to 330 degrees, figure 11.13. Winds within this region will result in the development of the vortex ring state of the tail rotor. And number seven, conditions A, B, and C of these factors in a particular situation can easily require more anti-torque than the helicopter can generate. And in a particular environment, LTE can result. Certain flight activities lend themselves to being more at high risk to LTE than others. For example, power line and pipeline patrol sectors, low speed aerial filming, photography as well as in police and helicopter emergency medical services, Environments can find themselves in low and slow situations over geographical areas where the exact wind speed and directions are hard to determine. All right. Unfortunately, the aerodynamic condition that a helicopter is susceptible to are not explained in the black and white terms. LTE is no exception. There are a number of contributing factors, but what is more important to understand the LTE are taking the contributing factors and couple them with situations that should be avoided. Whenever possible, pilots should learn to avoid the following combinations. Low and slow flight outside of ground effect, winds from plus to minus 15 degrees of the 10 o'clock position, and probably on around to 5 o'clock position. Tail winds that may alter the onset of transitional lift and transitional thrust, hence induce high power demands and demand more anti-torque left pedal than tail rotor can produce. Low speed downwind turns, large changes of, of power at low air speeds, low speed flight in the proximity of physical obstructions that may alter smooth airflow to both the main rotor and tail rotor. All right. Pilots who put themselves in situations where the combinations above occur should know that they are likely to encounter LTE. The key is not 
put the helicopter in compromising condition, but if it does happen, being educated enough to recognize the onset of LTE and be prepared to quickly react to it before the helicopter cannot be controlled. Early detection of LTE followed by the immediate flight control application of corrective action, applying forward cyclic to regain airspeed, applying right pedal, not left as necessary to maintain rotor RPM and reducing the collective thrust, reducing high power demands on the tail rotor, is the key to safe recovery. Pilots should always set themselves up when conducting any maneuver to have enough height and space available to recover in the event they encounter an aerodynamic situation such as LTE. Hmm. Understanding the aerodynamic phenomenon of LTE is by far the most important factor in the ability and uh, option to either go around if making an approach or pull out of a maneuver safely and replan is always a safe option. Having the ability to fly away from the situation and rethink the possible options should always be part of the pilot's planning process in all phases of flight. Unfortunately, there have been many pilots who have idled a good engine and fully functioning tail rotor system and auto rotated a perfectly airworthy helicopter to a crash site because they misunderstood or misperceived both the limitations of the helicopter and the aerodynamic situations. All right, so we'll hold off right there. That is uh, page 19 of 24. Got our pictures. I'm going to have to study these. Mm. Page 19 and 24, and that was pretty much uh, do -do 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 -do, loss of tail rotor effectiveness in chapter 11, starting from page 17, 18, and going into page 19 and 24. See you.